I have another mini PC for you guys on this video. I had many of you ask in the comments of the last video with the SER5 B-Link unit, which unit can run VMware ESXi? I want to share with you a really interesting mini PC that is compatible with VMware ESXi right out of the box. Well, as many of you know, the mini PC market has literally exploded with powerful hardware. However, if you run VMware ESXi in your home lab, one of the blockers with using mini PCs is the Realtek network adapter. With Realtek, VMware simply does not recognize the network connection when you even install ESXi. So if you plan on utilizing the onboard network controller, which I know many of you want to do that, with the two and a half gig networking that many of these come with today, you have to find a mini PC that is running the Intel network controller, something along the lines of the i225 or i226 network adapter. Well, the mini PC that I want to share with you guys today is the GMK Tech Nuckbox K10. This is a really interesting and powerful little mini PC that sports the AMD Ryzen 5800U processor that is, of course, faster than the SER5 5700U. This processor sports a total core count of 8 cores but 16 threads, and you can upgrade it to 64 gigs of DDR4 memory. However, it really excited me about this particular mini PC since it's running the Intel i225 network adapter. And that is a two and a half gig network adapter that allows me to take advantage of the new Microtik CRS310, which a video is forthcoming on that switch. I wanted to see just how well I could transition workloads from a legacy Supermicro standalone host that is sporting the Intel Xeon D 1541 processor that on average with just a moderate amount of workloads is pulling around 80 watts sitting in my home lab. Now the GMK Tech NUC box with the 5800U Ryzen 7 processor sports a very low TDP value, which I'm hoping to take advantage of. So I wanted to take out the 1541 Xeon D and replace it with the GMK Tech NUC box and migrate the workloads that I had running on that super micro host over to that NUC box. And I was pleasantly surprised to say the least. Now, before we dive into those workloads that I've migrated over and what I've found as far as the end results, let's dive into a bit more detail about the hardware that is found inside the GMK Tech Nuckbox K10. Now, as mentioned, the K10 sports the Ryzen 7 5800U processor, which has a base clock core frequency of 1.9 gigahertz. It can burst up to 4.4 uh, gigahertz in turbo mode. It also includes the Radeon graphics adapter running at 2000 megahertz. Uh, it came configured with a 512 gig SSD, which is a M.2 2280 slot PCIe 3.0 configuration that comes with the GMK Tech nut box from the factory. Now, it does also support DDR4 memory up to 3200 megahertz, and you will find that you have two DIMM slots in the K10, so you can run the DDR4 memory in dual channel mode. Now, the K10 also comes with other features that if you're going to use this as a desktop replacement to your current configuration, that you can easily take advantage of. Of course, it has uh, wireless capabilities, Bluetooth. It can support 4K Ultra HD resolution, has a very small footprint, an audio jack, a multitude of USB-A ports, and it also has a Gen 2 USB-C connection on the front of the unit. So now let's take a look at the actual workloads that I have running on this K10 and my impressions of replacing my Supermicro Xeon D-based home lab server with something like the K10. Okay, so I'm logged into my home lab vCenter server environment. So I wanted to show you guys how I had added the GMK Tech Nuckbox K10 to my home lab environment. As you can see, I'm running uh, VMware ESXi 802, which is update to VMware correctly identifies the AMD Ryzen 7 5800U 
with Radeon graphics. As you can see, it shows we've got 16 logical processors. We've got a single NIC, and currently I have 15 virtual machines that are connected. Out of all of the mini PCs that I have tested in the home lab, I probably have the most experience and road behind me on, let me say, real world virtual machine operation in the home lab. This box has performed fantastically. I have had this box powered on 24 seven. I have targeted the box with multiple clone jobs, multiple backup jobs. And in fact, all of the virtual machines that you see currently on this particular box, I restored those from my backup solution all of those operations are just really great real world operations to target a VMware ESXi server and specifically looking at hardware stability, functionality, performance, those types of things. So I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, this box has been really, really nice, not experienced any issues in its performance or stability, which for me really is more important than performance. Now we want acceptable performance, but if you have just a killer performance box, but you get purple screens of death and ESXi, that is kind of a deal breaker. Uh, because you want that stability. You don't want your services going up and down and having to troubleshoot and those types of things. So I wanted to show you guys too, also on the physical network adapters, uh, that it is a, a two and a half gig ethernet LAN adapter. And again, I have this plugged into my new Microtech two and a half gig network switch, and it has performed very, very nicely. Not had, a, had any issues with performance time. I'll show you guys just the, the past day of activity. I'm not even hitting 20% CPU utilization just with the workloads that I'm running. And of course, like most home labs, most everything is just sitting idle or baselined. I am so pleased with how efficient this little box is running. Now, one of the drawbacks, I think, of the Nutbox K10 from GMK Tech is the uh, lack of additional storage that you can install in the unit. Unlike a lot of the other mini PCs, you cannot install a traditional two and a half inch SSD within the K10 chassis. A lot of the PCs, you can just open the cover up and they have a slot for a two and a half inch hard drive. That's not the case with the K10, unfortunately. So you, all you have is the M.2 2280 slot. However, as NVMe drives have increased in size, you can get a lot of value, a lot of space, especially if you're running relatively small footprint virtual machines, containers, those types of things in your home lab on a mini PC, such as the K10 then I think that internal storage is going to suffice for many. And then of course, if you're running a modern hypervisor like uh, ESXi, Proxmox, so on and so forth, you can certainly target iSCSI LUNs, NFS, those types of storage configurations, which is going to uh, elevate what you can do in the home lab uh, from a storage perspective. But do keep that in mind. If you're looking to build something with VMware vSAN, for instance, you're going to need something with additional drive slots before you can take advantage of that type of configuration. However, with the K10, I think it's a great choice for a more traditional VMware ESXi host with a data store that's on board, or if you want to target, again, something like an iSCSI LUN or NFS share. So there you have it. This is my observations from running the K10. I have to say that I've been pleasantly surprised. Will this be the unit that I stick with as a replacement for something like the Supermicro? I'm not sure. I, I know there are a lot of other options out there that I want to explore. I'm also excited to see how the technology ramps up towards the end of the year in the first part of 2024. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the GMK Tech Knuckbox K10 with the Ryzen 7 5800U processor that is fully compatible with VMware ESXi 8 Update 2 with the Intel 2.5 gig network adapter. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more great content coming you guys' way. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Keep on home labbing, and I will see you guys on the next video.